I'm just an interested person who's a novice. How can I make money using AI this week, this month, this year? That's a great question. First, you want to develop with the help of AI the money making skills, which would be, for example, like copywriting, branding, sales. For a sec, let's start really simple. I don't need to complicate this, you know. So the thing is, you can get, of course, expert coaching and all of this, but there are ways already to implement this. So if we're talking about, right, first copywriting, it's the front end of the internet. Like all we do, you go on Twitter, wherever you go, you read stuff. So you want to make that impactful. You want to make it persuasive. I would go to ChatGPT and you tell it, you know, like, hey, I want to write in a persuasive way. You're an expert copywriter. I want to talk about this topic. Help me out. So that you're already starting to learn how to be a persuasive copywriter because that it's a start. Get people involved in your content. You want to do branding, which is also what I use for myself, for example. So you have mid journey. So you could pay a graphic designer $500 or more. I usually get in trouble with graphic designers. There's one of my enemies, but it is what it is. As I said, you can hate the technology, but you cannot stop it. So I don't need graphic designers. I became a graphic designer like in three weeks. And people love my designs. And they're like, hey, I would love to know how you do all this branding stuff. And I can show it to them. But again, it's a thing that's done with AI and it's very effective. And it shows, you know, that you're a brand, you're an established person that knows what they're doing, helps you out with credibility and authority. And then, you know, you would close it with sales because you establish, for example, copywriting, you have a product or something, you have a consistent brand, and then you want to maybe close some deals, make some money. And this at this point, you know, you never did sales in your whole life. You're on the internet. You just started. So what do you do? Well, you, again, you go to ChatGPT. You tell it you're an expert salesman. I have this product. I, show me ways how I can sell it to different cohorts of people. How should I talk with them? How should I pitch it? What should be my tone of voice? And it knows how to help you with this. So this is a way that before you would not have access to this kind of fast leverage, right? You'd have to develop with years all those skills of just like writing. Let me go to some graphic designers. Uh, I don't know how to sell. I, I don't make money. With all of this that you have right now, which I with 20 bucks plus $10 with mid-journey subscription. So with $30 in my pocket, you're able to create a powerful brand on the internet and sell something. It depends on you again, because it's not made to substitute you. I don't tell to people it's like, oh, ChatGPT is an automatic money-making machine. You see those threads, they go viral. I hate them. I never produce those ones. Because the idea is that you, enhanced by AI, can become a money-making machine. Yeah. But the thing is, you need to know what you're going to do and how to do it. And AI is going to help you with this. So start doing it today. Yeah. And I suppose, like, I, I totally agree with your, your point that there's there's no get rich quick scheme with AI, right? I mean, you potentially just get rich. But, there is with with AI, which is interesting. Get rich faster. There's no get, get rich, rich quick, faster. but with AI, yeah, there's yeah, a get yeah. rich faster, and it really yeah. works. Or I should say, there's no get rich with zero effort scheme, right? No, like, because no. you still need the impetus to go out and do it yourself. You still need the original idea, even if you're asking GPT for ideas, um, and you're still competing with lots of other people who also have GPT, right? So if, it, if you've got an original idea, then maybe you've got zero competition. But in most lines of business, you're going to have competition, right? And most people at the, at the front are going, to, are going to be using AI themselves, right? So I guess my, my take on it is almost like, because I'm, I'm like, like you, I'm sure, thinking about this, all the goddamn time, right? About different tools and, and everything. Mm -hmm. And my assumption is that I'm running just to keep up, you know, just to stay somewhere near the. Because I'm obviously not at the front of the of the of the pack on, on any of this, but somewhere near, so that I'm not one of the ones getting left all yeah. behind. Yeah. Very good point of view. Yeah, that's very good to have. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so so. Tools then, we've, we've, we've spoken a lot about GPT, we've, we've mentioned mid-journey, we've got this, you know, some, some great advice and tips on, on how you can go about turning your business dreams into a reality. Are there any other tools out there that have perhaps been built on the GPT API or that are in entirely different platforms that you're using that you think are exciting or interesting that, that people should be checking out? There are thousands of tools every day, like thousands of tools that are like, you know, appearing like mushrooms per week. And I can tell you like 90% of them are, of them are very redundant. 
I can literally do what they do. Yes, because what they can do, I can do with like plugins in GPT-4. Yeah. So the thing is, all of these, what are your what are your favorite um, plugins? Exactly. So GPT-4? this one, these ones, for example, like I use a combination of them, and they're like, so, for example, I can give a case study. How would I before last year? How would you consume YouTube, which, which is like a free resource database, right? You want to learn about like I don't know, programming, arts. Psychology, you would go on YouTube and you would watch a video, it would be like 30 minutes, you consume it, you take notes. What I do is, for example, I have the plugins Video Insights combined with Zapier, uh, with the Zapier plugin. So what I do is, what Video Insight does, you give it the link to a YouTube video and I tell it, give me a bullet point summary of this YouTube video and apply it to my current project, which is learning Spanish. Um, then I tell it, okay, with these bullet points, write to me a Google Doc that I can forward to my Spanish teacher or something like that. So what it does in the span of 30 seconds is not me consuming 20 minutes of Spanish video. It's just me having an actionable document of things I need to do to learn Spanish in like one week based on this video. So I essentially I cut a lot of part of the consumption, like me watching this video for 20 minutes, which I can spend now on practicing actionable tips that I got from my Spanish GPT tutor. This is a possible yeah. use case. Another one, for yeah. example, would be like ask your PDF, where it's like the last year you get like a PDF of 50 pages and you're like, I don't know, you have to do a financial report and you have to go through it, of course, and read all of the stuff. Nowadays, you just use plugin, you know, like ask your PDF, you tell it, hey, I want to know, you know, like the results from the financial statement from last year in March. And it literally gives you the answer. It scans, you know, the PDF and it tells you what exactly you need. So you save time and you, you're a lot more efficient. So this is why sometimes, again, it goes back to what I'm saying as being an AI facilitator. I actually avoid giving people dozens of tools that they need to try out. I focus on the basics if they need more. If they're like specialized people, for example, they're like, I don't know, uh, somebody that wants to make music, right? So there I will try to give them some specific tools that helps them with voice copying, with instruments, mm. with melody. So there I would do more in-depth research. But for people who have like more general needs, I tell them, keep it simple, keep it effective. Because, yeah, you know, I mean, like, people get overwhelmed. They see all these lists and like, oh, every day you have like 10 new tools, 10 new tools. Like, you don't need all of this. Let's be honest here. How many, how many contacts do you have on your phone that you talk to every day? Like 20, 30 people. How many apps do you have that you use every day? Seven, eight. And you think that by adding every day 20, 30 of them is going to make a difference? We're humans at the end of the day. Keep this in mind. Yeah, yeah. Again, yeah, it's psychology. So, yeah. I work I'm, with I'm like humans. I, I work, I, I, the machines support me, but at the end of the day, I know that I'm working with humans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, unlike the machines, we only have a limited attention span, right? <laughs> yeah. A limited amount of focus, yeah. Um, so it, it sounds to me... So it feels to me like there's a kind of running theme with lots of people I speak to about AI uh, who are working with it every day, which is, and tell me if you agree with this, there's almost like an 80-20 rule where 80% of the work now you can you can farm out to the AI and the 20% that's left is where you're really driving value as a human, as a decision maker, as the like actuator who's, you know, making the call on these things and being the kind of creative force, I suppose. Would yes. you agree with that, broadly? Absolutely. I mean, this is excellent said. Like, it's very good the way you put it because that is the purpose of it. The thing is, that's why we created it. The idea is, this is why like, it ties to what I told you earlier, is like we designed this to be a tool that allows us to do exactly this. So I don't have to you know, spend my time writing the same thing five times what I can do is simply like I give the repetitive tasks. I know the prompt that I need to give it to the machine and it will take care of these repetitive tasks. And I can focus. I can focus, for example, on the, uh, the, the creative part. It's like the decision making, as you said, is not like what art am I going to create today? Is it going to be you know, like about nature, about the human soul? I don't need to think about like, ah, oh, what the colors I'm going to use or like, I don't know, you know, what size is going to be my canvas. You can automate all of this maybe to mid journey, like the size of your image and this kind of things. But the idea is that that's how, if you're doing it properly, that's how AI is supposed to be. It's supposed to take away 80% of the boring stuff and basically help you with the 20% that you, I mean, you do the 20% that makes a difference. Um, 